drinking it in while I'm drifting away. Breathing you out of my lungs. This project was inspired by a $1,400 dresser from Anthropology. I'll post the photo of the original in the community tab. It reminds me of a beautiful wedding cake and my lifelong addiction to sugar, especially frosting. It's been a year since I've had any sugar and my health has improved dramatically. Let me know in the comments if you think this dresser looks like the original and if you've ever tried to give up sugar. I've been talking to you, girl. All of this right here used to be some of my favorite things to eat for dinner. I left the most favorite thing of all over in the kitchen. Hold on, I'll go get it. Vanilla frosting in a tub. Sprinkles. Peeps. Malt balls. Pop tarts bowls and bowls of Cap'n Crunch cereal. My mouth has $30,000 worth of dental work. I was like a drug addict. I would try really hard to eat healthy. I would go on juice cleanses. I would eat salad for days, and then I would break down. I would go back to this kind of stuff. I have not cheated once. I haven't had any sugar in 11 months. Not a drop, not a peep. I haven't craved it like I was born this way, but I wasn't. I found this vintage dresser at my local consignment store. I wanted something simple with three drawers like the Anthropology original. This one has four drawers, but it worked out perfectly and I love the casters. In my 30s, I would get up, I would run eight miles, and then I would try and make it throughout the day without eating any sugar. Sugar craving would just get so intense. It's Easter time and I see the peeps. I like to feel the grains of the sugar in my mouth. I would just get frosting all over the peep and that's what I would eat for dinner. I just ate as many as I could eat without feeling totally guilty. Normally I would never have this this close to my mouth. It was a yo-yo for my whole life. Ever since my mom took all the sugar out of the kitchen. I've been through this a million times. Cover the entire dresser with white swan and our new DIY brushes. DIY paint is thick. It helps to use a spray bottle full of water to help it move across the surface. You're like a bad addiction, causing friction, creeping into my peace of mind. You're like a cruel... I was born with a severe asthma allergy. It would give me a shot. This was before EpiPens or inhalers. My mom would take me to the doctors every two weeks and then I would fall asleep in the car on the way home because the drugs and the medication they were giving me was intense. It would make me hallucinate. My mom was at the bowling alley and she was expressing her frustration to her friends. So this woman that she didn't know just walked up to her. She overheard her talking about me. She got right up in her face and she said, you need to take your daughter off of dairy and sugar and her asthma will go away. What are you talking about? Every child needs milk. My mom went and found this book called Sugar Blues and then I come home from school one day and there's nothing in the kitchen. She threw away half the food. We didn't even have ketchup because there was sugar in it. We had no bread, we had no chips, and she started making all these weird things to eat. To achieve the look of thick frosted wedding cake, I used paper clay and molds from Iron Orchid Design. We sell these products in my store in Solana Beach and they will soon be available on my website. I'll put a link below to find Iron Orchid products in your area. Play into the molds and use a credit card or a rubber squeegee to drag off the excess and remove immediately. To 
This project required a lot of molds and three packs of clay. You certainly don't need to use as many as I did here. I was going for a very specific look. Paper clay can take several hours to dry, which gives you plenty of time to use them, especially around curved surfaces. I find that they work best when used right out of the mold. If you let them dry completely, they can curl up and not lie flat. My asthma symptoms totally went away and we started eating carob cakes and she started making bread from scratch that was hard as a rock. She was growing her own sprouts and we were eating wheatgrass. At Halloween, my mom gave out boxes of raisins and the kids threw them in the pool in the backyard and it was embarrassing. My Aunt Linda got married in my grandma's backyard and my Aunt Linda has this wedding cake. Three tiers with, with frosting this thick and roses made out of pure sugar and it's all white and it's all fabulous and it's huge. And my mom was like, oh no, you girls are not gonna have any wedding cake. We don't eat sugar. My grandma Beard, she was this Mexican fireball. She took me and my sister into the kitchen and she gave us both a big piece of wedding cake. Yes, thank you, grandma. And my grandma's guarding the door. When all the pictures came back of my aunt's wedding, there's a picture of me and my sister and we're eating the cake and my mom sees it and she was mad. My mom and my grandma, you should, what do you mean they can't have any cake? It's sugar, it's bad for them. Well, it's Linda's wedding and I didn't think that that was right. So I gave it to them. You're, you're overreacting to this whole healthy food thing. One little piece of cake is not gonna hurt them. I believe I'm a man with a heart that's a little off beat. You can see here that I'm brushing the glue onto the back of each mold and applying the clay before it has dried. This allows me to bend and manipulate the clay to get the look that I want. I wanted the design to mimic flower vines growing up and across the furniture like sugared roses climbing a three-tiered wedding cake. I used Aileen's Tacky Glue for this project, but you can also use wood glue. However, I would not recommend using hot glue. I also used eight different molds from Iron Orchid Designs. I will list those in the description box. My grandma had lost 100 pounds and she was on something called the Atkins diet. And I watched her eat a lot of bacon and a lot of meat and she never had bread. And it was just a low carb, very high protein diet. My mom always told me that my grandma died of cancer because of the horrible diet that she was on. And as I started to become an adult, I believed that meat was bad for you. My mom always drilled it into me that the worst thing that you could have was milk and meat. Milk would always bring my asthma symptoms back. I would go back and forth between vegan and vegetarian and sometimes I was raw vegan. My mom just ate greens and vegetables. She was on the Gerson diet. There's no fat in it, there's no meat in it, there's no dairy. It's just basically living on vegetables and potatoes. I thought she was superhuman because she could eat this way. My mom had tons of digestive issues. Her skin would break out in rashes where it would bleed and she would have to wrap her arms up with bandages and her teeth started to go transparent. You could see through her teeth. And then my mom died of cancer, about the same age as my grandma. I'd be lying if I said it was easy. I could have laid the dresser on its back to avoid the mold sliding down, but I wanted to get a realistic perspective as I was creating the design. So I opted to use painter's tape to keep everything in place as the glue dried. Oh, 
After losing my mom, my health started to decline. I had severe chronic fatigue. I'd always had problems with chronic fatigue, but I didn't attribute it to anything other than depression from losing my mom. It got worse after she died. I was watching a YouTube video and I came across a girl who had lost 100 pounds on keto and she claimed that it totally changed her health. I was at a place in my life where I was so desperate that I was willing to try anything. And even though this diet sounded like the exact opposite of everything my mom ever told me to do, I went to the grocery store and I bought meat and I bought eggs. I bought milk. When I first started the keto diet, I had no idea what to eat. I was always told if there's too much fat on your body, there's too much fat in your diet. And so I never had butter. Now I eat lots of butter. Cream cheese, I would never buy that. Sour cream, I would never buy that either. It was, my whole life I avoided the fat. Now I have cream cheese, I have sour cream, I have butter, I have whole milk. This is organic salami. I like to take this out of the package and spread cream cheese over it and roll it up and eat it. Mom always said that out of all the meats, pork is the worst, but this is what I eat. Call anytime you need me gonna find you it's a good idea to let the clay dry overnight before painting them you can paint them before they are totally set up but you risk losing some of the detail someone you can trust i'm right behind you work another layer of paint into all the nooks and crannies of your molds with a brush I'm using our new well-rounded synthetic brush. It's great for this and holds a lot of paint. And I want to see you fly. In the areas where the drawers open or the design curves around a corner, I cut the mold with a pair of scissors and held in place with glue and tape. Pass you by. Don't wait for tomorrow Cause you ain't got that kind of time After the clay dries, it shrinks and cracks in some of the areas. So I went back using tiny portions from the molds and filled in the gaps. And promise me you'll hold on to All the life that still lies deep inside of you and I like the vintagey effect of the cracking but you can also use the clay and fill in the gaps using it like a wood putty as I'm doing here This year has been the first year that I've been totally free of sugar. Not just sugar like this, carbs, bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, cookies, chips. I haven't eaten any of it and I don't miss it. I just feel like I have been let out of food jail. I'm in my early 50s and this is the first year in my life where I have lived free of an obsession with food. I don't want to go back to the way that it was. When this video is over, I'm throwing all of this in the trash and I'm not going to feel bad about it. If you're going to leave a comment down below saying that I'm wasting food, I disagree. I'm throwing it in the trash and I'm going to like it. If you don't like it, that's fine. Gonna lift it up, whatever's got me down. Gonna lift it up. Using dark wax over white paint can look very intense or dirty if you use too much of it. I'm using a combination of clear wax first, then dark over the top before the clear wax dries, then going back again with more clear wax and using it like an eraser. DIY wax is very manipulatable. Is that a word? It doesn't get as intense as other waxes. That's why I love it. I'm seeing no way out, but I'm reaching out. There's no way I'm staying. After working the dark wax into all of the low spots, use a clean paint rag and Q-tips to wipe back the excess and leave the high spots clean and white. There's a lesson here. I am what I believe. Don't lift it up. 
I know there's some of you watching me and you're thinking you do not know what it's like to really be overweight. You are over exaggerating. I had one comment on a video, a woman saying, how dare I talk about my weight issues? I should not be complaining. Here's the thing that's really hard to talk about. My grandma died of cancer at 67 years old. She was on the Atkins diet. My mom died of cancer at 70 years old and she was on a vegan diet. I'm in my early 50s and I'm on this keto diet. And am I wondering, am I gonna end up like my grandma or my mom? It doesn't scare me. I'm not worried about it. All I know is how I feel is a dramatic change. I had brain fog, it was hard to concentrate, and I was always tired. But the reason why I stuck to it was because I was not hungry and I had never felt that before. I don't feel like I'm on any kind of special diet. I just have found the foods that I can eat and I'm happy. There are so many things that have improved after a year of keto. Better vision, better mood, better skin. These are just a few, but we are all different. So I encourage you to find what works for you. The last step is to lightly sand the edges and buff the wax after it dries overnight with a soft cloth. I believe I'm a man with a heart that's a little off beat. Between the flesh and the bone that old devil found a way in me. When the nights grow wild, you can find me with a smoke and a drink In a bar that's hopping with all the false prophets surrounding me So I see, yeah You got a lover, like a religion You gotta tell her how you've been sinning I still am able to satisfy the sweet cravings with keto desserts. No one can know how food affects you better than you. I'm not going to tell you not to pay attention to doctors. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert. To find DIY paint in your area, for more information on Iron Orchid Designs, or to sell DIY paint in your store, click the link below. I don't want to pay $1,400 for a dress or any anthropology. I would rather make one. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Let me know in the comments if you think my dresser looks like the one from anthropology. And join me this Saturday, I'll be live in my new membership group. For more information, the link I is below. Know, I know, oh, oh, I just met you, but you love.